Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this short tutorial, I'd like to talk about speed optimization with Trap Code Particular. In more recent versions of Particular, we've added a new acceleration option that lets you switch from CPU to GPU. And I'd like to talk in detail about what this means and how you can take advantage of it. I'm going to jump over to the designer so I can show the speed impact of different parameters in real time as I make them. Now, in general, particular calculates two different types of data over time, and these types of data are what can slow down your processor. So one type of data we have is point calculations in space. We're calculating massive amounts of 3D point calculations in space every time we generate a particle and its path. So every frame, it needs to figure out what direction the particle is going as well as what it's doing over time, such as being affected by gravity, affected by turbulence, that kind of thing. So that's one type of data, the actual point calculations. The other type of data that particular has your computer handle is image compositing. So when we put together different types of particles and we perhaps have them blend using different blend modes, the actual compositing of the particles, as well as things like motion blur and depth of field, that is another type of processing. And for years and years, both of these data types were all calculated in one place, which was on your CPU. Newer versions of Particular from version 3.0 on have the ability to hand over the image processing and compositing and depth of field and motion blur over to your GPU, which is a piece of hardware that's specifically designed to handle large amounts of image processing. So I'd like to go into a few specific examples where I can show you how GPU will really accelerate your rendering, and I can go into some examples where you won't see a huge improvement using GPU. And in those situations, I'm going to go through a few tips and tricks to optimize your rendering speed. There's two very easy ways to slow down your processor with particular. One is to use a very large particle types. You notice as I go from small particles, which particular and my CPU seem to handle pretty well. As I turn this up, you'll see that it significantly slows down. This will slow down even more if I take this particle type and switch this over to a glow sphere. The difference with the glow sphere is that it actually has two different blend modes for each particle. So it has to do two compositing tasks for every single particle that it renders. So as you can see, my CPU just isn't keeping up. Let me go in here and set this uh, blend mode to add. I'll turn up the overall velocity just so we can actually see something going on out in the fringes once it does uh, actually start rendering these particles. There. So we're getting maybe two frames a second or so. So at this point, I would say this is a great time to switch your rendering over to GPU. We're not really doing anything complex. We're not requesting a huge number of particles. We're simply trying to do some image processing that our CPU just can't handle in real time. So I'm going to click on this cogwheel down here, and this is where we can see our acceleration options here in the designer. And I'll switch this over to GPU Direct. Now you'll notice there's two different modes in here, and we'll cover what these mean in just a second. But notice that simply switching this over to GPU Direct actually speeds this up quite a bit. And this is actually the slower of the two options. Direct rendering has your graphics card mimic a CPU. And what this does is allow for more reliable rendering. There's certain situations where streaming just isn't reliable for massive amounts of particles. If we render them in batches, spreading the rendering across your GPU, we can end up with unpredictable drawing order or in compositing order. So direct is a very stable but not as fast way to render. Streaming is much, much faster, but it has some limitations. You notice when I set the blend modes for the particle type in my uh, glow, I set one particle type to screen and the glow itself was set to add. And streaming doesn't like this. It cannot properly sort two different blend modes found in one particle type or two different blend modes in between systems. So if you want to use multiple systems or mix and match, uh, aux particles and main particles, you're going to want to set your blend mode to an identical 
blend modes. So now if I go to GPU streaming, I'll turn this on, and now we've got particles streaming all across my GPU. Now, another situation where we will overload our CPU is by loading sprite images. So if I go to my particle type, and I'll set this to a sprite colorize, and load in some sort of image to apply to my particles. So I'll just set this to a five point star. So I'll set this back to CPU. And it starts out okay, but as we compound more and more particles over time, our CPU really starts to slow down. So again, large particles like this, especially sprites or textured polygons, will really overload your CPU. So let's switch this over to direct, and we'll see a bit of a speed bump, and then this will definitely pick up once we set this to streaming. Now with regard to GPU streaming and custom particles, there's one more limitation that you need to be aware of, which is using particle types that change over time, such as QuickTime movies. So if I go to Smoke and Fire, and I set my particle to be some sort of fire loop. GPU doesn't like this. Streaming is not supported for footage that is a type that could be animated, such as a movie file. So again, this will force it back to direct. It will be a bit faster, but keep in mind, we're essentially loading a several megabyte file. I think this file is probably about 10 megabytes. So we're loading a 10 megabyte image for every single particle, and we're asking it to try to play in real time. So if you temper this with some realistic expectations, you'll find that GPU rendering can be tremendously helpful, but it isn't going to solve every single slow render that you've got. So on that topic, let's talk about situations where GPU won't speed things up where you think it might. So if I reset, and let's say I am rendering 500 particles per second, and then I go to my aux system and I turn all of my main particles into particle generators, and we set this to 100 particles per second. So at this point, we're requesting quite a few particles, 100 times the 500 particles per second from the main particles. And as I draw this on, my CPU is doing a pretty good job, but over time, it will definitely start to slow down. And you might think to yourself, well, I could just switch this over to GPU and I might see a bit of a speed bump. Well, that sounds good, but if you switch this over to GPU, even if I set this to streaming, we aren't going to see a huge speed improvement. And the reason for this is what I was speaking about earlier, the two different types of data processing we're doing. We're doing point calculations and image compositing. GPU is only handling the image compositing. So when our CPU is overloaded with a massive amount of particles per second, the GPU really isn't going to help a whole lot at this point. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what are some things that you can do to optimize your render speed? Obviously, fewer particles per second is definitely going to help. So if you're using the aux system, keep this particles per second count as low as possible, but as high as you need it. You can turn it up just to the point where you kind of see that detailed line that you're looking for, and you might find a huge speed improvement. Another thing that you might not think about is considering your lifespan. A shorter lifespan means fewer particles visible at any given time, which means fewer particles processed at any given time. So if you can go in here and knock this down even 10 or 20%, you can get a pretty good speed bump out of lowering the lifespan there or lowering the lifespan of your main particle. So knocking my main particle lifespan down from three to two, there is a pretty big improvement in my render speed. When you define your GPU or CPU settings here, even though they're not retained in one of our block settings, this will still be sent over to the main settings within Trap Code Particular. And if you want to change your settings here within the effect controls, you can go down to the render section and switch your render mode manually here in the acceleration settings. So that's just a quick walkthrough on how to use GPU and CPU effectively, and just a few tips and tricks on how to optimize your render speed within Trapcode Particular. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in another lesson.